Hey guys, so it's been a pretty <clears throat> busy summer. Um, here's the aircraft. Haven't shown for a while. Uh, there's been a couple things I've done. The biggest thing that I've done is I put a new MT prop on this summer. Uh, mine was due for an overhaul, so every five years or a thousand hours you're supposed to replace, uh, get them overhauled. Um, so I just basically bought a brand new one from Pipistrelle and put it on because the uh, overhaul time takes about um, three months, I was told. Um, and mine was leaking grease, so I had grease splashing up the prop blade. Um, but yeah, it's been working really well, this new prop. It's the exact same as the other one I had, MT-33 hydraulic, constant speed. Um, but today... I need to take out the ballistic parachute because it is overdue for a repack. Um, it's a five year repack and the new ones are nine years. So it's gotta go back to GRS in uh, I think the Czech Republic. So we're gonna have to rip that out. I have some instructions from Pipistrel to get that out of there and yeah, send it off. Step number one, you gotta wrap the handle securely so that it's not moving anywhere. Next step, we have to remove the handle bracket so that the handle, the deployment handle is hanging free from the cable. There we go, that step is done. Now comes the tricky part. We have to take all this apart, take this tape off, then use an X-Acto knife to cut away the silicone underneath of all these. Um, this, this plate is removable. So we're gonna have to cut this out, cut this back, this back, and take this. This is for my GPS as well. So a bit of work ahead to do this. Alright guys, got the cover off, <laughs> finally. Probably took about an hour to break this thing free. I used a heat gun uh, to heat up the silicone. There's little tabs that were holding this plate on. So I cracked the silicone, burst the blade, and then used a flat end screwdriver to pry it out with some heat. So these were the problematic areas that were tough to get free. Those orange spots, they were glued onto the back of this thing. I'm not sure why they would do that instead of just using silicone. Uh, anyways, this is the parachute in there. There's the rocket, it fires off. So now I'm gonna have to figure out what to do next. I'll read the documents. All right, so I found out one more step to take this handle off. It's actually two screws that hold it on, so we're gonna take that off so I can slip it back down in here because it's gotta come out of the whole system. We're gonna do that now. All right guys, so making some progress. You basically pull up on the straps and this connects to the rocket, so I'm pulling on this cable that attaches the rocket to the parachute. I'm pulling it up and it's coming out pretty good. Okay. 
comes. Oh, there's the parachute. I'm going to have to undo this, get this off of there, and have to figure out how to get that rocket out of there. Looks like they use some sort of Loctite on these threads. Be a good idea. Okay. So we got the straps off. And do this all the way. All right. So that's free. There we go. Straps from the plane are disconnected. There's the rocket. Now I gotta figure out how it's mounted. And pull it out. Maybe it's just slid in place, we'll see. So, let's see if I can put this here. Inside the container for the parachute, there's a plate with tape that's taped it in place. I'm gonna take that off. And I'm assuming that is how I get the rocket out. Uh, the whole assembly is probably mounted to it. Um, so hopefully that's how we do it. I was right, there's nuts on the back there to undo. There we go. And that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> Just that, that simple little thing. Okay. Okay. Hey guys. So we got it out. Um, I had a mechanic, local mechanic, come out. He's done a pipistrelle parachute removal before, just recently, and he's working on another pipistrelle. Um, they have to take it out actually tomorrow. So we're gonna send mine and those other two to back to uh, the factory to get repacked and recertified. Um, yeah, so mine is definitely different than most. It has a center parachute system. I'm not sure if that's how they all come now. Uh, I paid Pipistro Extra to do it like this. Um, but there are documents that they gave me to remove the parachute system and the rocket were definitely incorrect. It, uh, it said that you need to pull up on the rocket, um, the wires that connect the rocket to the parachute. It said to pull those up as you pull out the parachute. Now what you had to do is there's in behind here there was four bolts and uh, nut ends holding on the whole rocket assembly. So those had to be undone. So the bolts actually stayed in place and they don't spin. So all you do is you undo the nuts on the back end here and then push the rocket system back a little bit, about half an inch and then you can pull it up. And out, and the whole thing comes out pretty easily. So yeah, that's that's about it. Um, Dave, the mechanic, he took the took the system now, so he's gonna um, deactivate the rocket. Uh, he's actually gonna just uh, shoot it off the rocket uh, primer or whatever it is. And yeah, then they'll get those shipped back, and I'll have another video showing the installation process. I'm gonna order some parts from Pipistrel, some new tape to seal it up um, and possibly some new covers and now that I have everything open I'm just going to tape it all back for now until I get the parachute back because I still have to fly but I'm probably going to replace this with the Waz GPS and put ADS-B in this plane because it doesn't have it yet so that's something coming up in the future that I'll definitely vlog about as well alright so I got it all back together and ready to fly. I just basically taped it all back on. Should be good to go. All right. Now we can go flying.
as you can see, we got one done. And one comment to note when you're doing this, uh, going from small to big tires, you wanna make sure the fuel is fairly low in your tanks. If you got full tanks, it's gonna leak out like crazy on the tank that's now leaning over just because the big tire is on. So yeah, make sure that you don't have a lot of fuel in your tanks when you do this. Took about 30 minutes to put these tires on, switch them out. So definitely getting faster at doing this job. It used to take me a couple hours. But I uh, got everything set up, made this nice box to jack the plane up. Cause you need lots of, lots of uh, clearance. Um, your arm on a conventional jack is just not, not long enough to get it, uh, get the plane high enough without that box underneath. So yeah. And don't forget to fill up the air in your tires. And these are the Aero Classic tires, 8.5 by 6. And I got them from Aircraft Spruce, and they are sweet. These are my favorite tires on this plane, for sure. You get butter, butter smooth landings. They're just so forgiving. Uh, even in winter, they're awesome. Like you get a um, foot of snow, you can just power right through it. You got lots of prop clearance. Got the plane slowed down just because the turbulence is pretty pretty good at times. So just blow just blow 100 knots cruise here. Coming up to the airport. Acting like the patrol here is Fox Charlie Charlie Del Toulouse, about two miles to the north. Across we're heading to a known for 28 Green Lake Charlie Del Toulouse. That was a good flight, uh, pretty uh, rock and rolling, but got it done, got my work done. What matters, landed safely, another day. All right guys, so that's it for now, and we'll talk to you again. I have more for you. Cheers. Awesome.